Welcome, it's Facts You Don't Know. If it's your first time here and you want to find out new facts that will definitely make you smarter and more. Well, and for to make sure to subscribe and active the notification bell so you don't miss anything. Everything in life is a surprise and you'd never know what will come your way. All you can do is live each day to the fullest and hope for the best. Make the best of your situation. Do good whenever you can and avoid injuring others. He who lives a long time sees a great deal, as the old, old adage goes. That was partially the case with our buddy Carlos, and I say somewhat because Carlos hasn't lived that long yet, but he has certainly seen a lot through his short life because he was employed as a cab driver. Carlos, a 33-year-old gallant and kind young man, had been on the road for as long as he could remember, and he was still on the road. He received his first automobile as a birthday present when he turned 16 as part of his 16th birthday celebration. Driving was something Carlos enjoyed doing. He enjoyed the speed and the pleasure he received from being behind the wheel of a car. When he felt the leather in his palms, it was like bliss, and when he heard the motor crank, it was like music to his ears. When he drove through skyscrapers and through cities, he felt alive and free. The street lights throwing rapid laser-like rays and the speed of the car making everything appear little and incomprehensible. The wind blowing against his face, refreshing and welcomed. He felt free and light, as if he were a king in his automobile, completely uncaring about what happened around him. The only thing on his mind was getting his passengers to their destination in one piece, which was his present preoccupation because he was riding with a frightened university student at the time. Mr. Could you please speed up since I'm running late for my exam? I've been studying all night and I fell asleep before the sun came up, the student replied, his face flushed with anxiety. Despite the fact that the driver joked, don't worry my son, I'll bring you to your college just in time for your test, and I'll get you there in one piece too, the driver assured him. As a result, Carlos followed through on his commitment. The gentleman arrived just in time for his examination. Best of luck to you, lad. After the person, Carlos screamed at the top of his voice, go ace your exam. He received a thumbs up from the other person. Her home was only a few blocks away from where he dropped off the student. He had picked up a gypsy mother and her daughter from the side of the road. In addition to her long brown skirt with designs and peacock feathers printed on it, she had several other accessories, including shoes and a large straw purse, that appeared to have been handcrafted. Carlos thought it was strange that she sat in the front seat and had the girl sit in the rear. After all, moms were accustomed to sitting in the back with their children. It's more secure that way. The girl was dressed in a sweet baby pink dress with a tulle skirt. Her entire appearance, as well as her skin tone, was completely different from the woman's. In addition, her outfit was filthy, as if it hadn't been washed in a long time. Carlos had gained a great sense of observation and detail. "'Can you tell me where you're going, ma'am?' Carlos inquired nicely, and he was given the location. The girl began humming a melody, the rhythm of which was upbeat, and Carlos seemed to love it. A reproachful tone was used by the lady— "'Shut up, Renata. You're getting on my nerves.' The young lady pulled her knees close to her heart. Carlos thought the lady's brutality was strange, but he didn't say anything, since, while it was possible that the woman wasn't her mother after all, it was still terrible to treat a child in this manner. "'Stop here, please,' the woman said, before turning back and instructing the girl to "'Go fetch it for me, Renata. It's clear that you don't want to make the same mistake as last time.' With the girl, her demeanor wasn't as pleasant and courteous as they were with the taxi driver. Carlos watched in disbelief as the young lady crossed the busy street alone. She appeared to be in great danger, and she walked to a man who was standing outside a shop. He handed her a paper bag and told her something, and she nodded and returned. I apologize for meddling, ma'am, but isn't it unsafe for your small girl to cross the street by herself? She's not my daughter, and you can't keep spoiling children for too long. They'll grow up to be worthless brats. They need to toughen up the woman said, her voice firm. But isn't she still far too young, you might wonder? Take care of your own affairs, driver. Carlos was taken aback when he noticed bruises on the girl's hands as she reached out to pass the bag over to her mother. It wrapped around her forehead in a full circle, almost like a bracelet, she explained. It appeared as though she'd been confined by something quite firmly. In his mind, alarm bells were ringing. With a pat on the head, Carlos congratulated the young lady. Next time, be extra cautious while crossing the street. A child should never cross the street alone, okay? A piercing gaze from the mother was met with a dismissive smile from Carlos, who turned to face the girl, who returned the smile. Following them from their goal, he decided to follow them back to their starting point. 
His automobile was driven inconspicuously, and when he got to the outskirts of town, he turned off the car's engine so as to not attract notice, because there were no other cars in the area. There were several tents up, and a trailer was parked nearby, not far from where they were. His attention was drawn to the woman as she attempted to light the bonfire. She was shouting at the young girl to bring her more branches and dead leaves. The young lady was visibly shivering despite her light clothes, and the mom had a blanket wrapped over her shoulders to keep warm. In her rush to carry the wood, the young lady slipped and fell on the ground, scratching her leg and breaking down in tears. "'You got what you deserve, little brat. If you're going to cry, then cry all you want. It was the woman who spat. I don't want to hear your unpleasant voice.' Afterwards, the girl went to one of the tents. This provided Carlos with the opportunity to intercede and save the day. To go into the girl's tent, he approached carefully and discreetly, listened to make sure no one else was in there, and then gently drew the cover back a bit so as to not shock the child. Psst! Hey, little princess, remember me? says the narrator. He spoke in hushed tones. Yeah, before responding, the young lady glanced both ways. Do you mind if I come in? Renata hesitated before nodding her head in agreement. Don't worry, I won't tell your mother, Carlos added in an attempt to get the girl to speak. She isn't my mother in any way. My mother's passed away, the young girl sobbed. Her head nestled between her legs. She abducted me from the orphanage while we were enjoying a picnic, she said. The question is, does this lady beat you? No words were spoken by the young lady. Just the way she curled up in on herself was sufficient enough. What do you think about accompanying me? It's possible that we'll locate your former orphanage, or that you may choose to remain with me and we'll work things out, okay? But first and foremost, we must get you from this location and away from this terrible woman. In the meantime, Carlos extended his hand and waited for the girl to grab hold of it. Because Carlos was a stranger and he may be just as evil as that woman, she took her time making a decision, which was natural. All okay, the young lady said. Carlos slung his jacket over the young lady's shoulders and the two of them moved away from the woman gently, very slowly, until they were no longer in sight of her. Then they ran, ran, ran like small children, till they were exhausted. Renata was overjoyed that she'd finally gained her freedom, and Carlos felt light as if a great load had been removed from his shoulders as a result of saving the little girl's life. He was bound and determined to see her through to the end. When they got to the car, they could hear a lot of commotion coming from the camp. Renata was being called out by the woman. Carlos got in his car and drove away as quickly as he could. They were in good hands. He brought the young lady into his home, prepared her meals, instructed her to bathe, and provided her with some of his niece's clothing. Fortunately, whenever his sister arrived, she usually left some food behind. The child gradually warmed up to Carlos, and she became bright and joyful, in contrast to the terrified, closed-off, muttering kid he had encountered earlier in the day. She has a wonderful singing voice and enjoyed performing. Renata occasionally accompanied Carlos when he was working on the cab, since they were on the lookout for her former orphanage home. Unfortunately, neither the name nor the location of the establishment were known to the poor girl. She would occasionally sing on the lengthy flights to pass the time and keep the boredom at bay, and the clients always thanked her and applauded her efforts. Your daughter has a lot of potential. You're a lucky family. One of our customers has commented before leaving a big tip. Carlos was about to respond by saying that they weren't related, but he restrained himself. They were almost there, and he would have loved to have been there. As a parent would, he looked after the girl and made her feel comfortable and at home. He wasn't alone himself while she was around and was always thinking of ways to help her feel more comfortable at her home. And in response, the girl appeared to feel secure in his presence. She opened up, and she became emotionally connected to him. "'Did you hear what the customer said?' Renata inquires. He inquired, putting his finger in the water. "'He's absolutely correct. We are an excellent team, and we would make an excellent family as well.' Renata said with a great deal of excitement. What about your orphanage? The orphanage was lovely, but it isn't going to provide me with a father. I already have you, she said a little sheepishly. You've got me on your side. I'll be there for you at all times. Is it time for us to return home, she inquired. With a huge grin on his face, Carlos confirmed that they were returning home. He was well aware that taking care of a child was a significant responsibility, but he was prepared for it. He had only known this lady for a few months, but he had already begun to care for her, and he would gladly continue to do so indefinitely if given the opportunity, since she deserved everything wonderful in the universe, and he'd see to it that she received it. Thanks for watching. Please like and share the video in social networks. We'll be right back to you as fast as we can.